In today's video, we're gonna be taking this interior design concept and creating it in our CAD 26. What's going on guys? My name's David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And like I mentioned, today I'm gonna to be walking you through step-by-step step exactly how you can replicate this in ArchiCAD. So let's turn around to this screen and get started with today's tutorial. Okay, so we've got an ArchiCAD 26 template open in front of us. Just use any template that is available to you guys. We're gonna be replicating this image right here and basically making it as quickly and as easily as we possibly can. So let's start off by using our wall tool and coming up and selecting our wall type. Because we're focusing on the internals of the wall, it doesn't really matter too much, but let's just pick this 50 millimeter double plaster wall. All I'm gonna do is simply draw a five meter by five meter box and use that as my starting point. Zooming back in, we can see we have our five by five. What we wanna do is actually start using some furniture pieces to identify spaces as best as we can. So let's go into our object tool and come to the top to open up the settings. We want to search for our first toilet because the toilet's on the left, it is one of the easiest to use. So let's use ArcCAD 26 wall toilet and adjust our settings to suit. We don't want the cistern, we actually want it to be an in-wall mounted carrier unit so we get that beautiful flush plate. The actual toilet unit itself as well is quite ugly by default. So let's pick something like toilet type seven. Now we wanna come across in our settings and just change a few bits and pieces. First of all, we wanna change this to black to make sure it isn't an ugly pink color. And then we wanna to come to our little 3D settings. We wanna make our actual toilet a nice color. So the seat is gonna be ceramic porcelain as well. The button looks like it's gonna be brass. So typing in metal brass and the connection, we actually wanna turn off. So if we keep going through our settings, we can turn our water connection off. Now, last but not least, this isn't an important step for us now, but it is something to always be mindful of in the future. And that's simply what layer it is on. So the toilet should be on MEP plumbing and then we can go ahead and press okay. We can drop our toilet in on the side here anywhere and then come back into our object to find our shower tool. Typing in shower, I'm simply just going to use the shower tray. I'm not actually gonna use anything else. This is just for a placeholder. So if we go 1200 by 1200, we're gonna be able to delete this later. Again, simply just a placeholder. We're gonna be using all of these objects over here, basically from Twinmotion rather than from ArcCAD itself. Last but not least, we wanna come back into our objects and find a beautiful little hand basin. So if we type in vanity, we can select basin 26 and go to rectangular. Then we can work through all of these settings to find exactly what we're looking for. So that's a much nicer single tap lever. Again, we wanna change that to black pen so we don't have to see that ugly purple. We wanna change our tap to brass to match all of our other fixtures. And then we wanna work through some of these actual settings as well. So for instance, this is only 135 millimeters deep. Looking at this image, that's easily closer to 200 millimeters. It's quite deep and quite chunky. So pressing okay, once again, dropping that in. There we have our three spaces created very, very quickly. Next, what I'm gonna do is select one of these outside leaves, Command or Control D run it across all the way to the end and press D again to dimension this. I wanna make these spaces about 1200 wide each. So let's go three, six, and then tap the minus button to allow ArcCAD to automatically do the maths for you. Holding the command button and clicking on the two edges is gonna allow us to trim everything off on the side. So now we're just gonna reposition these. The easiest way for me to do this is simply creating an arch tool, going out, typing 600, pressing okay and then aligning three circles to each wall. So that's gonna be the foundation of my arches and all of this is simply gonna be cavity space. I'm gonna select my plumbing fixtures, move them out ever so slightly. Now we have to create these curved walls on the outside. So what I'm thinking is they're gonna be about 100 millimeters thick. So that means I have to actually select these circles and extend them 50 millimeters each. So let's bring this up to 650 and do the same for this opposite wall here. Last but not least, we also wanna do the same to our final, which unfortunately means we then also have to just simply adjust our walls back out. Then we can come into our wall tool. I'm simply gonna select the generic wall shell, go Command T, open up the settings, convert it to a very basic structure, and then I'm gonna reduce it to 100 millimeters. I'm not going into too much detail with any of that stuff today. We're just making a simple internal 3D. Next, we're gonna press OK. We're gonna make sure that we've selected the curved methodology at the top here. We're gonna find the center of our first circle, extend all the way across, and then simply draw half an arc. Press Command or Control D, tap the Alt button, 
and repeat that same step so I have it three times over. Now I can go ahead and delete my arches because I don't need them anymore and I can position these circles exactly where I need them to be. Now what you'll notice is these appear to extend ever so slightly out a little bit so what I'll do is simply add an extra 250 mil to each of these edges. So I'm gonna create one straight line, copy and paste that across, and there we go. Now we've got some deeper arches to actually utilize. What you'll also notice is that our sink has a low wall approximately here. So if we select that, Command T, we don't wanna link that at all. It looks like it is about 900 millimeters, so we're gonna tap OK make that a low wall, push our hand basin to the center, and then simply reduce the width of our hand basin to 600. I know this is gonna be my shower point, so I can easily delete my shower, which was my placeholder. And then finally, I'm gonna hold the Alt button to use the eyedropper tool of that low wall, and then replicate it in the toilet space as well. Tap the P button to flip that wall the right way around, and then move our toilet to the center. Looking at this picture, the toilet's only sticking out ever so slightly, so I'm gonna push that back, type 100, type minus, and then readjust our low wall. If I select my marquee tool and then select just half of this bathroom, right click, show marquee in 3D, we can see we're starting to create something very quickly and very easily. Obviously, there's no colors, there's no textures, there's nothing added to this just yet, but we're getting there very quickly. What I wanna do now is select my hand basin, drop that down to the top of the 900, come back into my ground floor plan, tap escape a couple times and go to my slab tool. I want my slab tool to be able to create these two stone bench tops for the toilet and the hand basin. So what we're gonna do is simply select our polygonal method, change our slab and tap the command T. Again, let's change that down to what looks like a 20 mil stone change our materials while we're at it, all to stone. So we're gonna use a white stone marble for this one and press OK. Then all we have to do is simply click around to form our slab. So now that I've done both, I can come back into my 3D marquee. You can see that we've created our stone tops. What you'll also notice is that our flush plate is way too high and our toilet is also way too high. So let's drop that back down to zero so it isn't floating 100 millimeters above the ground. Open up our settings go back to our flush plate and reduce our carrier height to 750. So now we have our flush plate mounted on this wall. We can probably even push that up to 850 if we really like and come back to our ground floor plan. Finally, what I'm gonna do is go to my slab tool, press command and down arrow, turn my footings on and just drop that to minus 172. Press okay, right click on our ground floor, show as trace and simply create a floor for this project. I'm gonna go Command T to open this up. We're gonna be using tiles rather than any marble. It looks like they're 300 by 300 tiles, but I like 600, they're quite nice and significantly easier to keep clean. So pressing OK, back to marquee, check what we've created. Our floor is way too high, so Command D, drop that down, and we're starting to get the general shape. Next, what we wanna do is actually create these tiles. So the tiles don't go all the way to the top of our walls which makes it a little bit more challenging. First of all, let's select all of our walls that we've created, press the Command and G button to group them, Command T to open them up, and then we're gonna simply paint them green. So in this instance, I'm just gonna go paint forest green, link all of them together, press OK, and then I can adjust this into in motion again. If I double click on my ground floor plan, what I can then do is once again go to my wall tool, use that generic structure, Command T, drop that down to only 10 millimeters, and then change the surfaces to a very, very simple tile. So it doesn't matter which tile I'm using because I'm gonna change it in twin motion again. So let's just simply go tile matte white 15 by 15, link them all together, press okay. Then all we need to do is click through around the edge of these walls to actually create our two one tiles. Once we've completed that full loop, let's come back into our 3D marquee and I'm going to extend these to two one and press okay. It appears that our walls, for instance, aren't actually as high as I've created them. So I'm gonna select them all, drop that down, not linked, and let's drop that to seven. So what I've also noticed is I've pushed these walls a little bit too close to the other wall. So I'm gonna come back in and make sure that my tiles have been created properly. There we go. Now that we've fixed up that little glitch and push these tiles just a tiny bit away from this wall, we've created exactly what we're looking for. We'll also notice that there's a nice little trim on the corners here. We can do this a number of ways, but the easiest is simply re-grab our wall, open up the default 
go to two millimeters because it's probably going to be some sort of metal change it to brass press ok and then we're just going to create a five millimeter corner running both ways so if we create a little triangle just like that we can duplicate that to all the walls that we require we go coming back into our 3d marquee you can see we've got that corner protection on for all of our tiles and we've created most of our scene already last but not least we simply need two more things so let's come back into our ground floor plan let's go to our window tool open up our window settings find a simple arched window similar to the one in the actual photo change our materials across to black drop our seal down to 900 to match where we've actually created these low walls increase our overall height to 5 and potentially our overall width to 1500 then press ok drop that window roughly next to this space here now because we've created an extra leaf of this small tile wall we'll also need to actually introduce an opening so if we come back into our window tool use our arch top opening make sure it's 1500 2100 900 sill press ok and align that with our window come back into our 3d marquee i've definitely overdone the maths on this window so let's reduce that window back down to 1500 to 1700 and let's reduce the width back down to maybe 1200 i then also need to repeat those same steps for the actual cutout that I've created. Now, last but not least, we also need a ceiling. So we can select our slab, Command D, press the Alt button or Option button, drag it all the way to the top and change the material to plasterboard. Pressing OK, we now have most of our bathroom created. So what I'm gonna do is come to my ground floor plan, zoom out, 3D marquee a lot more of this space, right click, show as marquee. So now we can actually utilize most of this bathroom space and actually take it into twin motion to render it out properly. If you've been paying close attention throughout this tutorial, you would have noticed this desk mat on the desk right there. Basically what it is, is an ArchiCAD tutorials shortcut desk mat. It features all the shortcuts you need to make your workflow faster, better, and simply easier every single time without having to remember hundreds and hundreds of shortcuts. The shortcuts come in three colors and also for PC and Mac. So if you wanna grab yours today, make sure you check out davidtomich.com.au in the description down below. Okay, so now what we've done is we've taken that ArcCAD model, converted it into twin motion so we can start adding some of these beautiful fixtures, colors, and trims. So let's start off with the actual green itself because that is a horrendous, ugly green and I don't wanna look at it. Let's go into our Megascans library. Let's go to surfaces, plaster, painted. So I'm gonna start by using this Studco facade because it has a light gray undertone texture. So we can change it to that green color quite easily. If we go to our color ever so slightly start adjusting, we'll find our pale green color relatively quickly. This is what I'm gonna be using for the time being. If you wanna copy that code right there, you're more than welcome to replicate the same image. Otherwise, we can keep adjusting and playing until we're closer to the actual color itself. So that's the final code, press OK, and let's go back to our main library. Now we're gonna go into materials, metal, and I'm gonna simply drag and drop the brass onto our two finishes. I'm gonna reduce my reflectivity a little bit, open up the color as well, and turn it more into an orangey brass, rose gold, final finish and press OK. Next, we're gonna go back into our mega scans, go to surfaces, scroll until we hit tiles, go to our ceramic tiles and see if we can find these very modern, very trendy white square tiles. So this ceramic tile here looks quite similar. Let's test it out, see if it's the right one for this project. It doesn't look too bad, but we do wanna adjust some of the features. So let's make that fully reflective. Let's try and introduce a bit more of a blue tinge to turn it to more of a natural white color based on the reflection of the sun itself. Press OK, dive further into our scale settings, go into our axes and start reducing the stretch itself. So now I think that a two on the X and a 1.75 on the Y is appropriate. And then I'm simply just gonna move it up ever so slightly on the Y axis to remove that last tile cut off so it's very clean. Then I'm gonna come back into my library, materials, let's go into wall coverings, drag and drop a plaster onto our actual ceiling, adjust our color again, let's drag that more into the blue space to make it more white and clean rather than yellow because we've got a morning sun happening. Press okay, 
increase our reflectiveness ever so slightly. Then back into Megascans surfaces, we're gonna scroll down to our marble, find the tile that is most comparable to what we see on the screen. So I've decided on this white marble tile here. So I'm gonna scale this up to two and I'm gonna introduce a bit more of a gray tinge to this color. So dragging that down, making them a little bit gray more towards our white polished floor. So let's introduce a bit more of a pinky undertone, press okay. I'm gonna increase the reflectiveness of them as well to start seeing more of our shadows and more of our city skyscraper skyline in this final render. Then we're gonna go back to library, go to sketch fab and start looking for our final finishing touches. So we have a pendant light, a mirror, a shower head and rose and our channel drain as well that we need to add. So I'm gonna go through these quickly and jump back into it when I've found all of the right objects. There we go, we've managed to find all of our materials or create something from scratch. So basically what we've done is we've used a plain one meter wide basic object from Twin Motion, put a grid texture over the top, we've introduced small coat hooks, a towel, the shower head, the shower mixer, as well as a handheld holder. Unfortunately, I wasn't actually able to find the whole hose itself, but what I did find was a chamfered box along with a custom texture over the top to make that replica of this timber. Obviously, we could have done this in our CAD a lot better and a lot quicker, but overall, I think that works for the time being. What I had to do with this globe as well was create a sphere one meter and then also replicate a pendant over the top. So this sphere basically just sits over top of a white pendant and gives it a bit more color and reliability based on the original image that we're trying to replicate. All we need to do now is put together some 3D videos, export it, and we're completely done. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you check out the playlist to the side of me for more great architectural content. If you love the video, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below, hit the like button, and if you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment as well. But like I mentioned, that is all from me, so I'll see you next Monday.